welcome to the program. Cambodia has just marked its 44th anniversary of independence from French rule. But the political uncertainty gripping the country has made it a sombre affair. King Norodom Sihanouk has offered to abdicate since he and the United Nations have failed to keep peace in the kingdom. Fighting continues on and off the battlefield. The king's son ousted first Prime Minister Norodom Ranarid hopes international pressure will force second Prime Minister Hun Sen to allow him and others a safe return to Cambodia for next year's elections. But things are more complicated now with ex-Khmer Rouge official Aung Suri and his troops pledging loyalty to Hun Sen. Inside Story travelled to Cambodia, where it seems many are sceptical next year's elections can be free and fair. And as Susan New tells us, despair has created unlikely candidates for the contest. Buddhist Jayavarman II expanded the Khmer Kingdom in the 9th century, ordaining Angkor as its capital. A pillar of artistic genius, religious belief, a powerful, centralized, unified society. The temples leave many in awe, and royalty is no exception. Last week, King Norodom Sihanouk celebrated his 75th birthday as a defeated leader. His wish? That Cambodia return to peace and the glory of the ancient Angkorian Empire. More and more research have proved that the leaders that built those temples, fantastic temples, you know, behaved themselves. They did not think about their own personal interests. They thought about the, the interests of the people at large. And like the eight tales of the Ramayana, the kingdom is not without struggles, struggles that are deeply etched in its history and people. Some believe these temples are a paragon of the resolve of the people. Like Angkor Wat and other sacred structures, the Cambodian people have seen their country through countless of conflicts. And in any conflict, they leave battle scars which are difficult to heal. In the 70s, the war between the Lan Nol government forces and the Khmer Rouge erupted. It ended in 1975 with the rebels capturing Phnom Penh. The Pol Pot regime later exterminated more than a million Cambodians in what became known as the Killing Fields. Then there was Vietnam's occupation in the 80s. And in the 90s, clashes involving the Khmer Rouge, royalist forces, and government troops. The Pol Pot regime and the communist regime destroyed our moral and ethical values. This, this, this deception to me is more important than the physical and material deception. Bridges we can repair, uh, you know, uh, or, or, or roads we can repair, buildings we can repair. How about repairing, you see, uh, the moral behavior, you see, very difficult. Despite the re-establishment of the monarchy, a UN-sponsored election in 1993, and a coalition government that followed, Cambodia is no nearer to peace than the middle tale of the Ramayana, which depicts two siblings fighting for power. Second Prime Minister Hun Sen seized control in a July coup d'etat. On the grounds, first Prime Minister Norodom Ranarit was preparing one himself with the help of the Khmer Rouge, who were outlawed in 1995. Hun Sen maintains he had to strike first, resulting in Prince Ranarit without a job, opponents making a quick exit, and a country without much credibility. We have all together to try to put in an end in very fast manner one to the present crisis in order to prevent any new civil war from happening again. We requested an interview with Hun Sen to try to find out what the challenges he and the kingdom now face. We were informed by the second prime minister's office that he was unavailable. No doubt Hun Sen is a busy man. He's been competing against ousted Prince Ranarit for legitimacy in a popularity contest that's taken both to the United States and Europe. After he was the winner of the uh, coup, he had to restart his credibility among the community, among the Cameron people, as well as among the, on the international scene. So he asked, uh, you know, if he set a coup, he can even change the king, he can even change the kingdom to be uh, something else. But he said, no coup, so I have to pass now, pass through the National Assembly, to the legislative power, to 
who try to have some sign of uh, democracy. So what I said in a, in a, in a meeting, I'm the one who opposed. The outspoken 60-year-old former soldier, minister, California donut maker, and now opposition MP, wants to make clear the four-year-old National Assembly has some teeth. Four of my colleagues of the same group left. I'm alone, very isolated. But after I give my speech about that, and an addiction on the 16th about the reshuffle of uh, government, I have a lot of friends now in the National Assembly. They said they dare not to say, but they approve what I said. Members aren't speaking up, and probably for good reason. The United Nations Center for Human Rights in Cambodia is investigating at least 41 politically motivated killings of Hun Sen Pek Party supporters, which took place after Hun Sen seized control. Some believe the number of casualties is much higher. And just two weeks ago, the bodies of two top Hun Sen Pek officials had been found. Basil Fernando spent many years in Cambodia and monitored the 1993 elections as a senior UN officer. He also believes if Hun Sen wants to salvage any credibility, he'll have to do one thing. First, the uh, election arrangement must be a result of agreement between the major political parties. That is the Hun Sen Pek, uh, of which uh, uh, Prince Renarith is the leader, the uh, Cambodia People's Party, uh, which is uh, in which uh, Hun Sen is the leader, and uh, the major political party that has uh, emerged now as Sam Rancy's Keme Nationalist Party. All these uh, groups must be parties in arranging the elections. There is plenty of political maneuvering outside of Cambodia. The international community has chosen a path of isolation to try to put pressure on whoever's in power to make sure that next year's elections will indeed be free and fair. First up, the United Nations has decided to leave Cambodia's seat empty. That makes the country a member of a very exclusive club, which Afghanistan and Sierra Leone are only part of. These are the only countries whose seats remain vacant because of domestic political turmoil. The U.S. has suspended non-humanitarian aid, while ASEAN has decided to leave a seat empty as it ponders membership to Cambodia. It was a mistake uh, on the part of our leaders uh, not to wait until you know, uh, Cambodia had been admitted properly. What Cambodia needs is aid, lots of it. Foreign aid makes up nearly half of the country's budget. Now it's struggling to sustain financial help as the International Monetary Authority suspends loans. The World Bank has reacted similarly, while the IMF's representative has been withdrawn from Phnom Penh for good. Yes, the reaction is good, pressure is good for the Cambodia right now, but I don't want them to hold the aid, the financial aid. I want them even to double, triple, but they have to monitor their aid, their donation, you know. Don't give to the politician who use that as a propaganda. The pressure is on for Hun Sen to guarantee the safe return of Prince Ranarit, with the international community making it a precondition for aid and the funding of $20 million needed to stage the next elections. Japan is putting on the pressure too as Cambodia's biggest aid donor, pledging $22 million for the year ending in March. Because of the political troubles, most of it hasn't been dispersed. Hun Sen, however, has given reassurances during his visit to Tokyo that Prince Ranarit will be allowed to return, as long as he faces criminal charges of arms smuggling and colluding with the outlawed Khmer Rouge guerrillas. <laughs> ឬតុលាការកាត់ទោសឲ្យរួចខ្លួនគឺជាការ <cười> Non-mock-na-ka-dos-rai-tam-ri-yak-ka-pa-dol-am-nis-ti-chun-chupo-no-rodam-ran-ri-ri.
There's a catch, though. Ranuit wouldn't be able to run for elections if he wanted to. That's if controversial provisions in a draft electoral law become official. The National Assembly opened debate last week about the wisdom of these provisions. One prohibits convicted criminals from running. That would disqualify Ranuit from the start if he's found guilty. For Hun Sen's Cambodian People's Party, good results are guaranteed, with proposed election provisions tilting in the CPP's favor. For starters, the body that's to organize, run, and monitor the polls would include representatives from each political party contesting the elections. With the way things stand, many fear a weak opposition will likely mean ballot boxes will be filled with names of pro-CPP candidates. A few opposition MPs in exile have returned quietly to Phnom Penh under UN protection. The first to take a chance is San Che. The Buddhist Liberal Democratic Party member was back in the capital to assess the political and human rights climate for himself and more than a dozen of his allies who are living in exile. I uh, presume that I would be find a way, perhaps in, in, in a gentle way, to persuade the Mike Consent to, to, to step uh, down from his office. So to give way uh, for the uh, 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 caretaker government uh, to, to, to take full responsibility in, 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 in working with the international community to, 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 to bring peace uh, and a real free democratic election. Surprisingly, hopes for being part of that democratic process can be found here. It's an unconventional place for politics to take off. But then again, this radio station manager isn't your typical politician. J'ai choisi le logo de, de nid d'abeille parce que je veux que les, les, les Cambodiens travaillent ensemble comme les abeilles, comme les abeilles. Oui. Et défend aussi le nid c'est-à-dire le pays comme les abeilles, travailler ensemble, sans se disputer, sans se disputer, sans faire la guerre ensemble, entre, entre les Cambodiens. His party is appealing to the young, because he says that's where the future lies. So far, he has more than 400 members in his Sambo Kamun Democratic Society, a party that will be officially launched tomorrow. Les peuples cambodiens, ils sont pessimistes, pas heureux parce qu'ils ont vécu la guerre, ils continuent à avoir la guerre, et ils n'aiment pas la guerre. Et depuis générations, que nos politiques, nos politiciens, ils n'ont beaucoup de temps de se disputer pour le pouvoir, mais ils n'ont jamais eu le temps de construire mon pays et de s'occuper du bonheur de mon peuple. Je voudrais bien confirmer que euh, mon parti politique, ce n'est pas pour le pouvoir, mais c'est pour développer mon pays. De toute façon, quand on est chasseur, on n'a pas peur de serpents. Il faut, il faut rentrer dans, le, dans la forêt pour chasser les animaux. Mais on, on, je ne suis pas un chasseur, je n'ose pas rentrer dans la forêt. Et je reste dehors et chasser les animaux domestiques du paysan, ça c'est pas bien.